Estamos con Duke Comer, copresidente de ICOM, que es el Comité eh, Internacional de Gestión del Patrimonio Arqueológico, que a su vez es uno de los brazos técnicos de ICOMOS. Duke, do you think that the management of archaeological sites is going to be something that will become more and more essential in the way that we deal with archaeology and cultural patrimony? Well, I think it will be uh, for many reasons. And For one reason is because the uh, public has an increasing interest in archaeology. And what that means is we have more and more visitors to the archaeological sites. Uh, and that's a wonderful thing. It provides great opportunities to educate the public and help them bring them into the effort to manage the site and appreciate the site and protect the site. But also, just because we have so many people now interested in the sites, we have to upgrade the management of, of the, especially the very, very popular archaeological sites, such as Machu Picchu. Mm -hmm. And I think as time goes on, we'll see more and more visitors to, your, to the Moche sites, such as you, uh, such as you investigate. We, we in Peru value very highly the fact that some of our, our archaeological sites, such as Machu Picchu or Chan Chan, are now in the, let's say, world monument list. Yes. You no, know, and the list of, uh, of uh, the world, world patrimony, cultural patrimony. You no, know, because we think that that is not only giving our sites visibility, but it's attracting resources. Yes. You know, because people are coming to visit those sites in particular. Is it beneficial for a country like Peru to have more sites listed? The World Tourism Organization rates the tourism potential of every country in the world. And as a matter of fact, one of their important criteria is simply how many World Heritage Sites that country has. And, and as the number of sites increase, I mean, the number of archaeologists that are trained to manage these sites, to deal with them, becomes something of an issue. It becomes a huge issue because as time goes on, we have a greater and greater responsibility to manage those sites and to work to build capacity, especially because people travel more now. Um, places that were uh, very difficult to get to 10, 20 years ago are accessible now. This is something that is of great concern to the Archaeological Heritage Management Committee, actually, building capacity to manage those sites in areas where that capacity does not currently exist. Using the new techniques that have been developed in the last couple of decennia, what can we see that we couldn't see before? What, what, what kind of archaeological sites and heritage can we see now that we couldn't see before? Well, the, I think the most important thing is to see an archaeological landscape. So we have very famous and very big sites, Machu Picchu, Chen Chen, but to really understand those sites, we must also understand the smaller sites in the region and how they relate to those, those large sites. So that's one thing. The other thing is the, manage, the effective management of an archaeological site has so much to do with understanding the landscape itself and which parts of the sites are most vulnerable to different kinds of destruction. It may be from people coming to a certain part of the site and looting that site because it's not, um, it's not well um, guarded or, or protected, but also, and this is usually the biggest problem, it's the development of the area around the site, changing the environment around that site. It can change the hydrology. Two examples that come directly to mind, one is, Petra in Jordan, where they have built so many hotels and so many restaurants and so many parking lots and so many streets that it, has, it produces flash floods. When it rains, the water slides over those impervious surfaces, rushes into the core area of the archaeological sites, causes erosions, brings minerals in contact with the tombs and the standing structures there that degrade them. That's one example. Another example is Angkor in Cambodia. So many restaurants and hotels have been built there and they've taken so much water out of the ground, they pumped water out of the ground, 
that it's undermining the, the structure, the foundations of these ancient monuments, and they're in danger of falling into the ground. Now, all of this now, we can see from a landscape standpoint, and we can track changes using aerial and satellite remote sensing. So we can identify these threats before they become irreversible and produce irreversible damage. So this is another big advantage for using this remote sensing technology. Como veremos entonces también este este ángulo, este aspecto de, de... De, de cómo se va a formular la arqueología de cara al patrimonio, ¿no? eh, o la palabra que se usa en inglés es herencia cultural, porque a diferencia del patrimonio se asume que es algo propio, es algo que hemos heredado de nuestros ancestros. Y los arqueólogos del futuro aparentemente van a tener que dedicarle mucho más tiempo y mucho más preparación a poder manejar este número que necesariamente, por lo que acabamos de ver, tiene que crecer. El Perú debe de pasar en la siguiente generación de más o menos una docena de sitios declarados monumentos de la humanidad ¿no? a tener un, probablemente una cuarentena. Y esos 40 sitios, ¿no es cierto?, de los cuales nos están faltando por lo menos unos 25, ¿no? tendrán que ser creados, tendrán que ser estudiados, registrados por una generación de arqueólogos que para esto tendrá que prepararse y formarse de una manera ligeramente distinta.